Right, today I've come to Nottingham in uh, Nottinghamshire to see the Hemlock Stone. There are many theories about where the Hemlock Stone got its name. One could have been that it was called the Cromlech Stone, which eventually became Hemlock Stone, which would have been from uh, 17th century Welsh, meaning bent flat stone. Another theory is that it could refer to hem, meaning enclosure, or stone as a border. Another theory is that it could have been a Norse word, himelig, which means overhanging. Any of these could be why it's called the Hemlock Stone. But as it is now called the Hemlock Stone, it has become forever associated with witches and druids. The Hemlock Stone is made from a local sandstone, the same sandstone that was used as the base of Castle Rock in Nottingham, which is quite weak and easily quarried. Uh, there is some debate about how this rock was formed. It's definitely stronger cemented than other areas of sandstone, but uh, whether it was eroded by natural processes, wind, rain, frost, etc., or whether there was some ancient quarrying effort going on here that left this big lump of hard-to-excavate rock, nobody's quite sure. Certainly both theories have reasonable merit. One theory about the stone's origin that I think we can safely ignore is the theory that the devil used to live in Castleton, up in the Peak District, and got so angry at Lenton Priory, which is just about a mile away, that he threw a huge boulder at it, trying to destroy it and silence the monk's prayers. I think... I think that one may not be true. Just a hunch, though. Something that's always difficult to get across on video is the scale of an item. And, uh, this one is um, uh, no exception. Um, this boulder is about the size of a house, uh, certainly the size of the nearby trees, and it's quite, quite impressive to stand in front of and, and just experience. You don't often see one single block of stone this size. You definitely don't expect it to be right next to part of the Nottingham Ring Road system. The sense of scale is even more pronounced down at the lower level, where you can just go up and up and you see all these different colours of stone and all the striations of wind and rain and just all the way up into the sky. It's quite astounding. You can also see in the ground where the uh, sandstone continues. To celebrate the Golden Jubilee of George III, uh, a cow was roasted on the top of the hemlock stone, up on that big flat platform, and the meat was, sold, uh, was given out to the people of uh, Bramcote and Stapleford, which were then uh, s towns on the outskirts of Nottingham, not part of Nottingham itself. Uh, to celebrate the Golden Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II back in 2002, they decided to revive this practice uh, when a beacon fire was lit at the top of the stone, uh, and now a regular community event called the Hemlock Happening happens every year uh, on the uh, Jubilee anniversary, which is the 3rd of June, or thereabouts, I imagine. They usually keep it at the weekend. Like many old sites in England, this is associated with druidic use. Uh, there's no evidence for it, but uh, this does have some reasonable claim to it. For one, it's an impressive formation. All the trees nearby are oaks, which was a tree that was sacred to the Druids. And there was a lost spring here, uh, listed on maps and descriptions of the area as a curing uh, spring, um, one of the healing wells that uh, fills the English countryside. Um, and the idea of a sacred spring next to a big stone, it, it's plausible for a Druidic location, but there is not any evidence for it.